my weightlifting this morning with my biggie mug. Hey guys, happy Sunday. I hope you all slept well last night when we last left off in yesterday's vlog. Speaking of sleep, I wanted to chit chat with you guys about this product that a viewer actually sent me. It is called the In Circadian Night Mask. It's by the brand Indeed Labs. And you guys know I like many of their products. This is a Canadian company that's cruelty free. You can get it at Ulta. Um, many of their products, including this one. And I love the brand because their products, as far as I am aware, everything I've looked into and tried and used are free of fragrance. And they have a lot of products that have peptides in them with kind of novel mechanisms, potentially. And what I mean by that is they're proprietary peptides that different companies make and they have some lab-based assays and maybe some small little pilot clinical studies that suggest that these peptides that the Indeed Labs uses in a lot of their products have kind of some interesting properties. So this night mask, which let's just stop calling it a mask and call it what it really is, a moisturizer. I've mentioned this before, I'm getting off track a little bit, but it's a trend where skincare brands We'll take a moisturizer and rather than just call it a moisturizer because where's the fun in that? Why would a consumer just buy another mo like buy another moisturizer? They've rebranded it as a nighttime sleep mask. I mean, a moisturizer that you put on your face at nighttime, a product that, that's moisturizing that you put on your face at night. That's a moisturizer, but they call it a night mask. Anyways, I digress. All right, this has a peptide in it called Nona peptide and I think I've talked about it when I reviewed their serums. Uh, I think it was the Penta Bright, one of, their, one of their serums that I reviewed for you guys. Anyways, I think it's the same peptide that was in that, but it has been shown uh, by the manufacturer in lab studies to inhibit um, the tyrosinase, the enzyme that makes pigment. And so it's been shown to be potentially helpful for improving hyperpigmentation. Now, when I talk about that, a lot of people ask me questions uh, in the comments. Well, don't we need melanin to protect our skin from the sun? To be clear, these mechanisms of skin brightening, they're not bleaching the skin and taking away melanin. They're just targeting abnormal overactive pigment production that leads to hyperpigmentation. So it's not like it's taking away the melanin from the skin. It's just something to improve hyperpigmentation specifically. So it has that in there, but then what's kind of interesting, and I mean, it's really, it's a stretch, but hey, it's in there. Um, so the whole premise behind this, it's in circadian. So it's kind of speaking to the circadian rhythm of the skin, which sounds like hooey, right? Um, but there's actually a little bit of truth to, to that. You know, a lot of times people will say the skin recovers at night. Um, and I even find myself saying that a lot and I have to catch myself like, okay, is that really, is there really a lot of truth to that? But in reality, there are certain things that specifically happen at nighttime in your skin as opposed to the daytime that definitely all together kind of support this statement that we say loosely of your skin recovering at night. Um, first of all, oil production is lowest at night, so the sebum outflow. Um, so uh, that is very well documented actually. Sebum production, oil production is lowest at, at nighttime while you're sleeping. And that's good because a lot of things that you put on your face, you might want the ingredient to localize within the pore. And so you can imagine that at nighttime when the rate of oil outflow from the pore is, is lowest, that's the best time for those ingredients to maximally go in because you're not getting pushed out by the oil coming out. So that's one thing that happens at night. You also have increased transepidermal water loss, so you're more prone to dryness and irritation. And because of this, a lot of people will experience heightened itch at night. I mean, most, most skin conditions that have itch, the itch is worse at night. Eczema, and that goes hand in hand with increased transepidermal water loss and dryness, which is the reason why putting moisturizers on at night is good. So this 
this helps with that because it's a moisturizer, right? It's not just a nighttime mask. Um, so that's that's another thing. And then our te body temperature actually increases. So that makes makes us even more likely to to lose water from the skin. And then lastly, there <clears throat> there are some studies showing that there's a circadian flux in the expression of something called aquaporin in the skin. And that's a little channel uh, on the skin cells that regulates water flow in and out. And uh, so there's some there's some data showing that that changes at nighttime. And maybe that's why we have more, our skin is more prone to being dehydrated or dry at nighttime. And so all that to say, there's a plant extract in this, uh, lesbideza, it's, it's a mouthful. Um, let me look it up here. Um, yeah, lesbideza capitata. Um, so extracts from this plant actually have been shown to help the skin or restoring the expression of those aquaporins at nighttime leading to better skin hydration. And there was actually a little small clinical study done on the, this extract in volunteers who um, were fatigued. And remember, I've told you guys in other videos that exhaustion, fatigue, poor sleep is, associ is associated with more prominent wrinkles, fine lines, etc. So they took people who were fatigued basically. Um, and they supposedly showed that the, these people had a 17% improvement in their skin uh, as opposed to placebo after only one week. And by four weeks, they had a 35% improvement. They then did a second clinical study. Uh, they looked at volunteers in, in this study who had a sedentary lifestyle, worked full time, and experienced tiredness during the week. And uh, these people were coping with dark under eye circles around the eyes. Um, I've told you guys about the pathophysiology of dark under eye circles, but one potential cause is simply being fatigued and poor sleep. Um, and so these people were asked to apply a cream with this extract in it to half the face um, or a placebo cream to the other half. And then they watched electronic tablets for two hours every evening for four days. Um, and the reason for that part is, you guys know, I've talked about in other videos, blue light um, from, largely from the sun, but also potentially, although it seems, seems unlikely from our devices, blue light can contribute to hyperpigmentation, but blue light can also, Blue light, ex exposure to blue light can also affect our circadian rhythm and keep, it tricks our brain into staying awake longer. So anyways, after the study, their eye contour was supposedly noticeably improved and they had decreased puffiness by 18% after only four days as opposed to nothing in the placebo group. So that's interesting. I mean, these are, uh, these are you know, industry studies very, very small, so not generalizable, but interesting and compelling. And anyways, the Indeed Lab mask has that extract in it. But that being said, I actually like this product as a moisturizer. I don't know if the plant extract or the peptide are doing anything, but it is a nice moisturizer. It also has polyglutamic acid in it, which is a nice humectant. It's on the greasy side. So if you're looking for a really rich nighttime moisturizer to help combat that decrease in transepidermal water loss that actually does happen at night. Um, that, that's, that's a real circadian thing for sure. This is a good one. I think this is like $25. I swear all of their products are $25. So yeah, thank you to whomever sent this to me. It appeared in my PO box and I've been enjoying it, but there was no like return address or anything. It wasn't, it wasn't from Indeed Labs because um, typically if a company wants to send me something, they reach out to me or there's like a note or something in the box from them. But it was just like a box with this in it. So whoever sent that to me, thank you very much. I have been enjoying it, but I thought I would share that with you guys. Speaking of moisturizer, I put on and have been wearing, as always, my Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46 Universal Tint. Speaking of protecting your skin from blue light, um, largely from the sun that 
comes through the window. Blue light, you guys, as a reminder, can and does contribute to early onset and persistent hyperpigmentation in Fitzpatrick phototypes three and higher. Um, so I'm Fitzpatrick phototype three. But anyways, you guys know I love this. A limitation, however, with using so, uh, a product labeled as a moisturizer with sunscreen is that the studies show that consumers grossly under apply those products specifically they don't put them around their eyes and you saw me put this on this morning i put it all around my eyes so it definitely can work as a daytime as your everyday sunscreen um, you just have to be aware of the fact that a major limitation with the moisturizer, with products that are labeled moisturizer with SPF is that the studies show that people don't apply enough and they have a tremendous, a tremendous amount of what are called skip areas and areas where they simply don't apply. Like you saw me put it on my ears, around my eyes, the sides of my face, my neck. If you watch most people do their skincare routine when it comes to the moisturizer stuff they might just dab a little bit on their cheeks and whatnot and that's it but if you're using it as your sunscreen it's got to go everywhere so that can be a major limitation but this product I won't, you know you guys know i love it and use it pretty much daily um it's very moisturizing it's not greasy though it's not greasy, it's not shiny, and it get, I think it gives the skin kind of a nice glow to it. This isn't sponsored or anything, and you know, I'm not affiliated with dermatology and D-R-M-T-L-G-Y. Anyway, I just love their sunscreens. It does have a funny little smell to it, but once you, if you can get over that, it's a great product. No fragrance. All right, I am gonna make myself something to eat because I need to. Um, I think I'm gonna make oatmeal. I am totally in the mood for that right now. Um, and I, you guys, I have made quite a dent in the Costco oatmeal. So remember when I bought it? No, of course you don't. It's not like you keep track on my grocery purchase dates. Maybe you do. Um, but I bought that big box of Quaker rolled oats several months ago, and it's. A large box but within the box it has two bags but I am actually almost I made my way through 95% of that big bag so yeah I think that is definitely a worthwhile investment if you have the storage space for it or if you want to split it up with somebody oats are just so versatile you can grind them up in the food processor and make oat flour for baking recipes, I love oats, but <laughs> unfortunately, okay, before I do that, <gasps> lay the judgment. <laughs> I need to clean this disgustingness. Otherwise, it's gonna get foul smelling in here. I cooked something yesterday on the stove and it boiled over and it's like this disgusting, who knows. So we'll fix that. <laughs> Boom, that came off with just a little bit of warm water. Miracle. I think it was dried, boiled over soy milk. <laughs> Disaster. All right, see how my, well, the lighting's poor, but my nails match my Le Creuset. I always get questions about this little crock. It's a Le Creuset, and it's perfect for oatmeal because the, um, the point of the heart is nice for pouring out. Anyways, so when I make my oatmeal, I always do um, my oats and my water. I put cold water and the, the rolled oats in the pot and then I bring it to a boil. If you boil the water and add the oats, they come out a lot more chewy, but if you combine the oats and cold water and then bring to a boil, it'll come out a lot more creamy. See how creamy it comes out? I, of course, <laughs> was ignoring it as it came to a boil, so there's a little bit crusting on the bottom that I'm scraping off with this bamboo stir thing that came with my, uh, with my French press. You're supposed to stir the coffee with this, but I never do that. I know it's technically supposed to be better that way, but... I'm, I'm so, I fiend for my caffeine so much that I don't have time to stir. <laughs> But yeah, this is actually kind of handy for cooking. Yeah. I always add a third of a frozen banana so that it can come to eating temperature.
And there's my oatmeal. I just topped it with some fresh blueberries and hemp seeds. <laughs> my desk was tidy, but I got into my planner. Yeah, like I said yesterday, I am back in my Erin Condren planner and I am just kind of jazzing it up for the week. This is so relaxing to do. It helps in my productivity, I guess you would say, uh, you know, to spend 40 minutes decorating a sheet of paper, <laughs> but it motivates you for the week. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna put out my to-do list for the week, but I'm excited to move into the Daily Duo in July. Yeah, I have had Erin Condren planners now for, this is my third year, and I don't always use all the stickers, so I have a ton of them from the old planners. On the Amazonian, I just ordered a little notebook, like a three-ring binder type thing, or a two-ring binder, and these clear page protectors that are the perfect size for these so I can keep them all together and that'll be nice and tidy. I need to declutter my desk. I have like random stuff in these drawers and I've been meaning to go through them. I mean it's just like various and sundry. <laughs> like look in this drawer. <laughs> it needs to be tidied. There's an exacto knife, origami paper, stamps, packing tape, cards, mints that I've never opened. Audrey Hepburn mints. So yeah. Oh, this thing is actually awesome. Slice. Um, yeah, this little slice thing, it's amazing. You guys, you need this in your life. It will open up those little plastic clamshell packaging things that are such a nuisance to get in and out of. The bane of every child's Christmas morning is getting into the, the clamshell. Packaging is the worst. And it's always like sharp too. It's deadly. Well, hey guys, it is much later. I'm hanging out here in my Santa PJs with my flashlight. I'm gonna go to bed. I am pretty tired. I did a rebounder workout tonight. Um, it's got me feeling it. That rebounder, you know, when you're on that thing, it's like you're just having a good old time. It's playful. You're doing the thing. It, it just doesn't feel like exercise. And then when you stop, you realize you've really got, you've really done an intense workout. I'm alternating the rebounder. I'm doing the rebound, rebounder workouts a few, a few days a week, and then I'm doing my treadmill running, and of course blogilates for my weights. This works for me, so let's see. I'm glad I got the treadmill though because I love running so much, but the idea of running outside in the summer heat here seems, yeah, I can't imagine that. I don't know what the kids here do that play football do summer camp, you know, football training camps. Like, how do they do that without dying? Seems, seems brutal, but I know, I know they do it. Good weekend, I mean, doing tasks and whatnot. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlogs and had a relaxing, productive weekend. It flies, doesn't it? It's unfortunate. It flies by, and before you know it, Monday, 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 Monday. Na, na, na. Hey, before you know it, it'll be Christmas again. <laughs> uh, and when Christmas comes, maybe I'll wear, I don't know, an Easter t shirt. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Like I said, if so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.